when I taped uh, the voiceover for your love letter, you have since um, uh, been nominated um, for a Golden Globe and a SAG Award for <laughs> Nyad. So that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, the movie that has affected me most in my life um, that I've seen in this past year without question is Nyad. Oh, thank you. It so is a must-see. There's... <laughs> there are so many important, universal, compelling life themes in the movie. Um, and... The fact that you refused to have a body double to help aid in the physical demands. I mean, this is Nyad. This is the woman who swims, who broke every record, who defied all possible logic of what could or couldn't be done by a human being. Well, I, you know, when I started, the, when, I, when I read it, I loved it. I knew I wanted to do it. And I didn't really think it through. <laughs> I didn't really think through the swimming, the physical part of it. I'm in a bathing suit. I'm 62, starting when I when I started the movie. Never so, looked hotter, I, by the way. Oh, well, you have like uh, the most beautiful uh, body. Well, thank you. I was swimming a lot, uh, and I had a great. I had an Olympic swimmer, Rada Owen, who was my swim coach, and she really instilled in me this belief that I could do it. I, I'd been in the water a lot. I was a diver, scuba diver as a kid. Which we're going to get into later okay. because anyway. you were on a boat and I, we have a <laughs> cooking segment. And Annette Benning is going to do her first cooking segment on television. So I'm looking so forward There's to that. There's a first time for everything. I know, and we get to do it here. I'm so excited. Yeah. So you do all of this physical work. Yes. Well, for Diana Nyad, who I got to play... When she turned 60, she decided to, to do the marathon swim that she had failed to do in her 20s. Yes. But she had been a hardcore athlete all of her early years. And this is Cuba to Key West, never been done by a human ever. So at 60, she decides to do it. And she goes to her best friend and she says, OK, Bonnie, I want to do the swim and you have to be my partner and be my trainer. And Bonnie says the logical thing. Diana, you couldn't do it when you were in your late 20s. What makes you think you can do it now? And she says, I didn't have this. I didn't have the brain that I have now. And she says, yeah, but you don't have the body. You, you know, you're 60. How can this be? How can you even think that this is possible? And, and she just put her mind to it. You know, when she finally did achieve it, and it took her many, many attempts, and she started when she was 60, and she finally did it when she was 64, she lands on the beach and she says, one, never, ever give up. Two, you're never too old to chase your dreams. And three, it looks like a solitary sport, but it takes a team. And uh, so Diana, for me, that's why I loved it. I was just inspired by it personally when I read it. I was moved. And it's not, so it's not so much about the swim, it's really more about her journey as a human being and her friendship yes. with this woman. You know, my friendships now, they've always been so important to me. And I've got buddies. I've, I've literally got a friend from when I was 10 years old. Yeah. But my female friendships are so vital, right, to my emotional well-being. That's why the story, that's why I love the story, because it's around the swim that, the, that it activates the, and you really see the dynamics between these two women who are so deeply connected, but yet have, you know, they have to go through a lot because of Diana's obsession with the swim.